everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're making a minimalistic Japanese tatami room. I am not very sure about the pronunciation, so do correct me if I'm terribly wrong. So first we start out by setting up this isometric room setup. Personally, I've always loved how a tatami room makes you feel. It's very comfortable, it's very subtle, minimalistic. The look of it is just fascinating. And that's why I wanted to recreate that in my work in this particular one. And as you can see, I just multiply all these little um, cylinders to make it them look like uh, they're actually a uh, tatami. And later on, I'm going to give it quite a realistic texture, so in the final render, it's going to look much better than just using a normal, um, normal color texture. So here, all you have to do is Control, control Shift D. Sorry, Control Shift T on the uh, principal BSDF, and then you can just select all of the um, the color of the texture, the uh, reflection, the normal map, and all of that, and they will just automatically do that for you. And now we need to arrange uh, the tatami exactly like how how the interior Japanese interior designers would do uh, in real life. So basically you kind of rotate them around to create a little bit of a space in the middle and that space is for you to um, put a table there basically and usually um, there will be kind of uh, an opening in the floor there as well so when you're sitting there, dining there, you can, uh, you can put your foot in there. And here I'm just stupidly trying to figure out how to arrange the rest of the tatami around the room without it looking just ridiculous. <laughs> And now I think what I wanted to do is that I want to create a window for this room uh, where you can look out of the window and see kind of uh, bamboos outside which is very zen, it's very cool I think. <laughs> I've always wanted to kind of live in a temple somewhere, maybe in a Japanese temple. Maybe in the future I could do that, you know. Um, uh, apparently people go on trips um, to, to, to just stay for like a silent treatment or something in the temple and it's supposed to be very good for you and uh, um, you go on like a spiritual journey there and uh, uh, from what I imagine there's always kind of um, it always kind of take place in the mountains where there's loads and loads of bamboos outside and it's just beautiful um, it's one of uh, it's one of something something that I really wanted to do as well so I wanted to recreate that in this little room here So here, as you can see, I'm trying to cut out a window uh, for, for the light to come through and for you to see the bamboos outside properly. And I love the colors as well. They're, they're looking very minimalistic and nice. Thank you. 
So here, I think because I cut out a shape in the floor, uh, I created some kind of uh, asymmetry in the walls there as well. So I'm going to correct that in the in the next few steps. But now I'm creating a wooden table for the centerpiece. So similarly, because I want this room to have kind of a more realistic feel, I gave, uh, I decided to give the wooden table in the end a realistic wooden texture as well. And I think it came out quite nicely actually. Quite a natural wood tone. Yes. Alright, this step here, I am giving the windows a frame because it's looking a little bit fragile on its own. And now the fun steps begin. I don't know why, I think making plants is possibly one of my favorite steps in making all the models I've made so far. Um, maybe just because I like plants in real life and uh, I think once you have grasped um, the, the basic method of how to kind of make plants especially with like particle system or how to populate your scene with plants they make everything looks better I think and now I'm just doing the little leaf step that I've um, I've done this quite a lot of times in uh, all of my projects before because I love putting plants in my projects. This is the first time that I made bamboos and uh, to be honest, because I've been living in UK for a while now, I can't remember when was the last time that I actually saw a real bamboo, so maybe this is a bit wrong. Uh, do let me know if you think this is looking weird, and that's fine. I, I am happy for any sort of advice and suggestions, honestly. And uh, yeah, here I am just trying to populate my uh, the back of the window with some bamboos, and later on I decided that um, if it's just bamboos, obviously I can't really cover all of the window with it. So I'm going to um, go with another reference photo in the back to kind of create um, a feel to it. Yeah, here is probably me trying to download a proper reference photo. I mean, it's not a reference photo, it's more like a background drop in this case. And as you can see here, it's a little bit too dark here. Uh, but in the next part of this video, I'm going to explain what I did with the background uh, photo to make it like transparent and the light can come through and you can see what's going on outside of the window as well.
And here I am creating a little um, sliding door for the room. So the method is almost exactly like what I use for the window. It's basically the wireframe, uh, my best friend, <laughs> the wireframe modifier. It's very useful, honestly, uh, especially if you're like me, if you don't get really OCD about details. Um, wireframe is a very good way to almost create structures that you like very, very easily, actually. So here, I am. I have no idea what you call these. Um, I mean, in Chinese, we just call them kind of like calligraphy, I guess. And uh, it's it's beautiful. I would consider it's it's like an art piece. If you want to hang one of those on the wall, it looks really nice. And uh, it's a, I think it's a really appropriate um, decoration here in this room. I think for this particular piece, the wording on the um, on the on the thing is is saying that um, it's something about justice. I think, <laughs> not sure. Okay, very happy to see that the room is finally coming together. So when I'm doing this, when I was doing this, I was struggling a little bit because I do love the Japanese um, in traditional interior style, but I'm not very familiar with it. Um, it's, uh, it's something that I'm just playing with and I had to look through quite a lot of reference photo for this to look slightly more realistic, not like I'm just making things up as I go. So um, yeah, so basically I was referencing uh, quite a few photos and uh, obviously I don't want it to look too plain. So that's why I added this, um, um, yeah, it's kind of freezing here. I added another very famous Japanese image here that almost you can see anywhere with a bit of a, a bit of a Japanese style influence that most likely have this image somewhere. So yeah, I decided to install that as well being as as cliche as it can be. I do think it looks really nice in the room. <laughs> And I think I gave the cupboard a real wooden texture as well. So again, uh, as I've probably mentioned somewhere in other videos before, that I like to use repetition of textures and colors. I, I do not believe in uh, like hundreds of different colors and textures in one image because I feel like there needs to be it's exactly like interior design there needs to be repetition so if you have a texture that you really like the look of it then might as well just use it for a few different things in the uh, in your scene so it looks like it's coherent it's it's calling each other and so in that case that your room really has a theme to it Here I'm trying to make a cushion for the little chairs on the floor. Again, I downloaded this um, Japanese pattern. I was just googling Japanese pattern basically and this is one that I really quite like so that I, uh, I just put it in there. And definitely don't learn from me. I am horrible with UV unwrapping and uh, sometimes I seem to be able to do it correctly sometimes I just can't so <laughs> in this case I'm only giving the top parts of the cushion um, some pattern but the rest of it I just kind of colored it so I receive a lot of messages people ask of people asking me how did you progress so fast 
Uh, the the honest answer is that I didn't. <laughs> if you watch my video carefully, you'll see that there's so many things that I don't know how to do. And I try to hide them sometimes, but most of the times I just show them in the clips. Because, um, as I mentioned in previous videos, I am in no way uh, trying to teach people how to do anything. Uh, this is my blended diary, not my blended textbook. <laughs> I just want to share my journey with you, basically. Uh, and Hopefully, if you can learn something along the way, that would be great. But if you want to teach me how to do something, feel free to do that. Like, leave a comment, let me know. I am very, very happy whenever people are trying to um, tell me something should be done some way or if, if, if there is a fast track, if there is a faster way of doing something. Love to hear that. And now I'm making a bonsai tree. How zen is that? Oh, I was really excited when it came to this part. And I learned this method of uh, uh, using a skin modifier uh, and a subdiv subdivision uh, surface um, modifier method to create uh, branches and barks of the tree from Polygon Runway, of course. <laughs> he is the master of all polygon stuff. And even though I grew up, I grew up in an Asian country. For some reason, I don't really know what a bonsai tree looks like. I, I have no idea what kind of tree it is. It looks like a miniature pine tree. As as far as I I imagine it, it kind of looks like that. So that's why I tried to create this sort of pine uh, needles structure leaves that I can use to multiply with the particle system on the bonsai tree. And I think that's kind of it for today, uh, for today's episode at least. Um, there is a second part coming up, which will, which I will be modeling the very exciting sukiyaki in the in the in the second part of this video. So, if you don't know what sukiyaki is, it's basically um, like a hot pot. Uh, a sweet and savory soup, not sweet, just slightly sweet maybe. Savory soup, and you kind of um, you stew all sorts of vegetables, and most most importantly, you put wagyu, you put really really good Japanese beef into it, and then you kind of dip it into uh, uh, an egg sauce. It's just amazing. It's the most incredible things ever. I had such a great time modeling uh, those foods. <laughs> and uh, you can see it in this photo and I'm going to be covering all of that in the next video. So stay tuned for the next part and I will see you then.